The state of California has many beautiful parks and activities, which makes it a quite prosperous state in the United States of America. Many places such as Balboa Park or Disneyland or even cities like Temecula have become a growing attraction to this day. However, with COVID-19 on the rise and with the governor's orders, people in the state of California have to stay right at home. The question is, do they even have a home? In LA, the homeland of the homeless, 53,000 people are experiencing homelessness. Just 22% of that are over 60 years old, and 3 out of 4 people are unsheltered. About 9,000 of those are experiencing homelessness for the first time. For all we know, it could be the next generation. My name is Angie, I am 43, and I'm a caregiver. I'm 40 years old, and I'm disabled. My parents decided they didn't want kids anymore, so I had to leave home when I was around 14. And then I had hit the streets, and then I started using crystal meth and all the other stuff afterwards. I'm schizophrenic, I lost my temper, then I lost my job, then I ended up homeless. Schizophrenia isn't like Alzheimer's or dementia, where it's commonly found in the elderly. Schizophrenia is most common between the ages of 15 and 40, according to a study done by Schizophrenia.com in 2000. And despite tens of billions of dollars going into research and prevention of it, there's still no cure. Approximately 200,000 homeless people are schizophrenic or have manic depression illness. With an entire constitution of 600,000 homeless people based off the data from the Department of Health and Human Services, the 200,000 comprise more than an entire population of many U.S. cities. Reports suggest 33% of homeless people battle mental illness. Sources cite mental illness as a major cause of homelessness, which often leads to drug and alcohol abuse. Common mental disorders that the homeless struggle with include bipolar disorder, paranoia slash delusions, schizophrenia, PTSD, which is particularly high in homeless vets, major depressive disorder, and severe anxiety. Homeless individuals who are suffering with a difficult mental and emotional condition may find it convenient to self-medicate with harmful substances as well. I've been clean and sober for nine years now, so I am very grateful for being in rehab. I think it could work for anybody, you just have to want it bad enough because most unfortunately most homeless people are you know addicted to drugs or alcohol and i mean you can go to other rehabs that aren't drug and alcohol related you know and most of the programs not all can help you with housing after that you know what i mean so i think i would definitely suggest that yeah housing matters um, providing more housing would definitely help. My daughters, you know, um, I have two daughters. One's 23, one's 16 or will be this month. And um, that's what keeps me straight because they deserve to have a mother who's, you know, normal, not using. And, you know, I just want to make them proud. They are the reason why I'm still clean and sober and I'm keeping this lifestyle. Plus, I like it a lot better. <laughs> well, I think that there should be people passing out masks and hand sanitizer because they're at higher risk of getting it because they're not able to wash, you know, and shower as often as other people. So I think that if they donated that, it would definitely improve. The hope that I'll reunite with my children one day. Get into a program, and then get housing, and um, stay positive. The homeless issue has been something we've had to face our entire life. And with COVID-19, things have become even worse for the homeless. What a person experiencing homelessness right now should do is stay in one place and try to be as isolated as possible. Local health departments, housing authorities, and homeless service systems should plan to identify locations to help isolate them if suspected with COVID-19. If you or a loved one might be experiencing this, please contact help or give out a lending hand if needed.